If you know that event A is three times more likely than event B, and twice as likely as option C, how would you turn something like that into a probability distribution that shows the chance of each of those outcomes? To do that, you can use a mathematical function called the softmax. Most commonly, the softmax is applied to the output of a multi-class classification model to turn the real numbers which output into a distribution over different classes. It transforms a vector of numbers into a vector of numbers between 0 and 1, which sum to 1. That is a probability distribution. The input logits represent an unnormalized probability distribution, and the softmax normalizes it, making it into a valid probability distribution. And this is the key characteristic of the softmax function. It takes a vector of numbers, turns them into a probability distribution. It does that in two steps. Firstly, for each element in the input vector, the softmax raises e to the power of that number, which makes it positive as any real number to any power is positive. And this ensures that we don't end up with negative probabilities. Then the softmax divides the result by the sum of those values to get it as a fraction of the whole. And this ensures that the output adds up to one. It's important to notice there that the indexes i and j are different. This z is the z in the particular position, which I care about right now. I'm computing each of these one at a time. And so I pass in each of these zi's one at a time here. But then when I'm computing the value, I want to divide by the sum of all of them after e's been raised to their power. So this makes them all positive. Dividing by their sum makes them all add up to one. And then the output is the vector of those values. It's easy to define the softmax by writing down the function that it performs on one particular element, like I've done here. That's just for one particular element of the input vector. But for shorthand, you'll often see it applied to a vector. And that's what I've got there. Because of the fact that the output sums to one, increasing one input element pushes down all the outputs of all the others. And when the difference between the largest input and the others is significant, the winner takes all. The largest element is pushed up to 1, while all the others are pushed to 0. In that case, the softmax approximates an argmax function, which finds you the position, the argument, of the maximum value of the input, and gives you a vector where all the elements are 0, except where there's a 1 in the position of the largest input. And this is where the max in the name softmax comes from. It should probably be better called soft argmax, but now this is the convention that everyone's familiar with. If I wanted to implement a softmax function from scratch in Python, it would look something like this. Unlike the argmax function, which is discontinuous, the softmax is smooth and differentiable. When one element of an input to a max or an argmax function becomes larger than the other, the output changes abruptly. Suddenly, it goes from one index being a one and all the others being zero, to a different element being one and all the others zero, pretty suddenly. Whereas when the input to a softmax function, if any of those change order of which is biggest, then the softmax output changes gradually. And that means the softmax is differentiable. We can evaluate how steep the gradient is at any particular input value. And I won't go into it now, but that means you can use the softmax function as part of a function which you want to optimize with gradient descent. But anyway, my point is that when the order of largest to smallest inputs to a softmax function change, the change in the output is soft. It's gradual and continuous. So the softmax is soft, because it's differentiable, and max, because it behaves like the max function when there's a significant difference in the inputs. 
The softmax function is important to understand because it can be really handy when you need to represent or predict a probability distribution over multiple variables. So make sure you understand it.